Okay, I think we're good. What's this? No idea. There's probably gonna be a lot of echo in this video because my walls are pretty bare. But it's that time of the year again where I talk about everything that I've made in 2023. Hi everyone, I'm Yingying and welcome or welcome back to the Noodle Kids Name Podcast. We're going to talk about everything that I made in 2023 and that includes everything that I've knit and spun. Yeah, we're going to talk about all of my FO in 2023 and that includes cast on from 2022 finished in 2023. But that does not include things that are still in progress currently. Let's just get into it. We're going to go in categories because I don't remember when I made any of these. I do have a Ravelry, but I've only been good at cataloging my things starting from like July or something. And some of them don't have a start date, some of them don't have an, have an end date. So we're just going to go in category. We're first going to start with the summer wear. This is my framework bralette from Jessie Made Designs. And the yarn that I used is Shador Fiber and camp fiber yarn. I'm really sad that Jador fiber isn't dying anymore, but best of luck to her. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. This bralette, I actually don't wear a lot because I don't know, it doesn't really stay where it's supposed to. And like, maybe I need to get like nipple covers. Hi, Hayes. Mr. Needy wants some attention. Yeah, I wore it a few times during summer or like spring-ish and I had a, what's it called, flannel over it, which I felt more or less comfortable with because I think it's just slightly too cropped for my liking. Maybe if I wear it, I'm going to have like a flannel over and just like have it tied at the bottom here so it's not showing too much and definitely get nipple covers because... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I am pretty satisfied with the result and the making of this is pretty fast and satisfying because the way that Jessie made made the design, you actually knit the whole time and then you reverse it for the end result. So the pattern is... I'm gonna walk closer. The pattern is reverse stockinette, so like pearl side out with a accent of slip stitch. Yes, that's what it's called. And the shoulder strap is double knitting. Overall, it looks really good. I just think it's too cropped for my liking. I've seen in other people's projects that they also make it longer to make it like a camisole, which if I have more DK weight yarn, which I only had one skein of this, I would probably make it into a longer version for a camisole. Jessie Mae came out with like a pullover version of this, so I am also very interested. I might make it. Who knows? So that's the first thing that we're talking about. Second thing we're talking about is my Oolong Tank by Amy Shear. And this pattern I fell in love before it came out and I knitted it twice because I wasn't satisfied with the first time that I made it. Yeah, I wasn't very satisfied the first time that I made it, but it was due to the limited amount of yarn that I have. So this yarn is, oh my God, I'm gonna be so bad at this, blanking on every single yarn that I say. This is Explorer Knits in cashmere sock, the blend that has cashmere in it from Explorer Knits. Oh my God, Hades just looked at me like, what the fuck did you do, which I, I don't know. The colorway is Extra Sprinkles, which I was not able to say the name for like several podcasts in a row, but I can say it now for some reason. And it's this soft variegation of like a beige and like an ice cream cone beige color with sprinkles of like a birthday cake. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna walk closer for the pattern. So it is a bottom up tank top with eye cord at the neck and armhole and a lace pattern in the front. I made another sweater with this yarn, which I'm going to talk about in the sweater section. And I have about one skein and like, let's say 20 grams left or something like that. And I made an entire oolong tank. 
I think this is size three or two. This is size two. And the other one that I made, I like it better with about like 150 grams of yarn for a size three. So of course this is very cropped because I was very scared about if I'm gonna have enough yarn left, especially when I was doing the i -core. I had like this much yarn left or I don't know. After I weaved in, it was like this much. So that was very satisfying. But overall, this is very, very cropped, which is nice for summer and maybe good for a layering piece. Now that I think about a lot of my pieces are like very cropped because I get tired of knitting the body at some point. I usually, I usually do top down. So at some point I just get tired of doing the body and I was just like, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna have it cropped. And then I complain about my sweater being cropped. So maybe that's one thing to improve in 2024. <laughs> But we're gonna talk about the next one. The next tank top, which as you can see is the same tank top, a oolong tank. It is a lot more relaxed, a little longer. And yeah, I definitely like this one better. And this is actually two different yarn from two different company. So the bottom yarn is Jador Fiber. It's a sock set that they have called Sunflower or something. There was no name on the label. It was a one of a kind. And the top, is a like and a lace sock train which i do not remember the name and i'm gonna put it on the screen yeah i warned you that i'm gonna be bad with the names so yeah this is the second oolong tank that i made and it was literally done like the first one in like two weeks and the second one in like two weeks because i just had so much fun making it and i really wear this a lot during summer and it's really nice because like it's breezy and there's holes. <laughs> All that to say that I really enjoy the pattern. It's really well written. And Amy includes like bust darts if you need it to like make it more fit better for bigger busts. I personally don't think that I need it so I didn't do it. But it's there as an option if you need it. Next is my Totally Tank Top by Park and Knit, Jessie Mae. Oh my god. I think it's Jessie Mae because Jessie Mae always have Park and Knit as her model. So I think it's Jessie Mae. But if I'm incorrect, I'll correct myself. So yeah, totally tank top. This is a one skein project for me. I, I have a lot of fingering skein, just single fingering skein. So instead of making socks, which I kind of got tired of, I have a pair of socks on needle right now and it's it hasn't been touched for like over a month because i think my sock mojo is just like kind of out the window you are so needy this is also a project that i kind of fell in love before it came out and i just really like the scoop neck design and the racer back it's like one of the first i think the only tank top design that i've seen that has a racer back yeah, usually it's like straps or like thick, thick shoulders. But I haven't seen a lot of racer backs for knit a tank top. So it was a lot of fun to knit. This also was a yarn chicken project. At the end, when I was biting off, I ran out of yarn actually. So I had to try to find a match from my stash, which I don't think you can see it on camera but it is a very different yarn color. The only similarity that they have is that it's vaguely in the green family and it's vaguely pastel. <laughs> so there's like one line in the bind off that it's a different color, but I think if you're far away or if you're like on camera, it's not visible. It is a very fun project. It's a very fast knit. All summer knits are like really fast to do. Oh, I didn't talk about the yarn. The yarn is Jador Fiber in the colorway Keropi. It's the uh, Sanrio collection that she had and I just snatched one of this because it was on sale at some point. And I like the color. It is a soft variegation of a pastel slash lime green and pink with speckles of red and black. So that's what it is. But anyway, I had a lot of fun making this and this is very handy in summer because it's just very breezy. 
but maybe I can make like a bigger size next time with like two skeins of fingering weight. We'll see. Maybe I'll, I'll, I think I'll remake this in summer because it's just really fun. And I modified the neckline to be two by two ribbing as the pattern said that I could. Even if it didn't say it, I would probably still do two by two ribbing because the other option is a rolled neckline, which is just stockinette. And then it, it's gonna roll on itself because it's just the nature of stockinette. But no, I, I think I like the two by two ribbing better. So that's what I did. Next project. This is my Home Camisole by Kadri. I've had this pattern for a while. I've made it once before, but the yarn choice and the gauge was not, it was not it. So I remade it with yarn that I spun myself. This is my first ever project that I've spun to knit it finish project. So the spun yarn is this. And this is actually two fibers that I've put together to make a gradient. It's from Fireweed Fiber Co. in their Targi Bamboo Silk Blend. And the color is Daffodil and Lake House, which I believe Lake House is currently in stock. I'm not sure about Daffodil. So this is the home camisole. And I intentionally made a gradient from top to bottom because both Daffodil and Lake House has elements of white, yellow, orange, bit of turquoise, bit of dark green. So I thought it would be interested to mix them together and make a gradient, which I think it's a gradient. It's a loosely titled gradient, but still, I like the result. And it's my first time using Targi, which I, in my research, I found that it's similar in Micron to Merino blends, which... <laughs> You're so comfy. Aww. Hades is make a little nest of himself on clothing just there. And he's gonna watch me and judge me the whole time that I'm filming this video. So that, that's great. It's my first time using Targi as a blend and I think it does suit my skin type because I have sensitive skin for like wool. To give you a, an idea, I think BFL, Blue Face Luster, is itchy. And I I cannot use mohair, like directly on my skin. So I always use alpaca when I can, even though I do have mohair skeins in my stash, which that stash video is coming <laughs> next year. <laughs> so yeah, I... It was at first when I was getting into the fluffy sweater trend and I heard that mohair is so soft and it looks really nice and it adds strength to your sweater. So I got a few skeins of mohair from some company and I just found out that it's not really for me so I opted for alpaca most of the time. However, I still like making sweater with just one strand of yarn. Most times it's a lot more mindless for me not having to think about two strands of yarn. Anyway, I'm off topic. I made this camisole once before, and if you watch my previous podcast, you would know what I'm talking about. I still haven't unraveled it. It's still sitting in my stash somewhere. It's still sitting in a drawer somewhere. But this one is a lot better than the other one. The gauge is correct. And I actually did the decrease before the I-cord at the bottom, so it fits a lot better. Yeah, I don't know. It just kind of feels special because I spun the yarn, even though I spun it wrong. Uh, it, it's like a direction of twist issue, which I realized and fixed in my next spin. So that's all good now. It's just when I was knitting it, the yarn was splitting because it was twisted in the wrong direction. So it was constantly trying to untwist what I'm what I'm knitting <laughs> but I think it looks nice it's giving like Noro yarn vibe so should we talk about accessories next um I made a few pairs of socks and I kind of just gave up so these are not in chronological order but I'll just put these aside 
first off, we have my Cozy Autumn Socks, which I think it's what it's called, but if it's not, I'm gonna correct myself as usual. Because we all know that I'm not reliable when I'm filming. Anyway, this is the Cozy Autumn Socks by This Handmade Life. And the yarn that I use, the main color is Tickle Pink. Is it like a second? I don't remember. But it's from Fireweed Fiber Co. And it's my first pair of lace yarn. Lace yarn. It's my first pair of lace socks, which I definitely want to make more of it. Because it's just so cute. The second pair is my I Heart Socks by Stone Knits. And the yarn is, the base color is from Lillian Pine, and it's a sock set, I think. And the rest, the contrast color, is from House of Wool, when they still have their monthly club. This is from January 2023, in the mini skein. So this is what it looks like. And I do not like these socks. I think I'm starting to discover what gauge I should use for my color work socks and why it kept getting loose and felting when I knit them. So in the next pair of color work socks, it's a lot better and it fits a lot better. It wears a lot better. And these ones are just not it. <laughs> I might remake them. And it's this is definitely not the pattern's fault because I did not follow the gauge and I just knitted whatever the fuck I want, kind of. <laughs> So this is entirely my fault. I have nobody else to blame but me <laughs> for these socks not fitting properly. I also got tired of knitting the hearts, so I kind of moved on to the heel a little too fast. I would prefer to have two more rows of heart, definitely. But the fit of the foot is nice. It's just the part where like the heel and like the top of your arch meet. I have a high arch, so it's very tight when I put it on. However, they're really cute. <laughs> so I definitely want to remake this when I regain my sock mojo. It's kind of gone. Speaking of colorwork socks, the next pair of colorwork socks is this. This is uh, uh, Tiptoe Through the Tulips by Stone Knits. The base color is from Fireweed Pipe Fiber Co. is Black Emerald. And the contrast color is the orange flower part is from... Jador fiber from a, another sock set that is a one of a kind, I think. And the green is from Nikki Slipshop, like the lighter green. It's in the pack of mini, the colorway 17, the green that's in there. I'm surprised that I remember all of that. This is the pair of colorwork socks that kind of just like my awakening to colorwork socks. I made one size three and one size two, and size two is definitely my size. And with Stone Knits pattern, most of the stitch count is the same. So it was good for me to make an entire color work sock using like my testing needles. I think, I think the cuff and the heels, I could be wrong, are 2.5 millimeter needle and the rest of the socks where I did the color works is two millimeter needles. And I think that is the best needle for color work in terms of durability, the way that the color work looks and the gauge that it gives me. So there are minor like felting at the bottom and at the heel part, but that is to be expected, especially at the heel part. And I just cleaned it up with a shaver. For me personally, size 2 from Stone Knits pattern with a 2mm needles is definitely the way to go. It fits nicely and it doesn't really fall off and even if it gets loose, it's like it still stays on my foot more or less. And I did add transparent elastic band for most of my sock cuffs. So we'll see how that works after some wear and I did like tighten the cuff a little bit because with handmade wool socks it does tend to loosen after a day of wear and the next two pairs we're just going to talk about it together because they're vanilla socks 
I need to shave this one. These two pairs are just random vanilla socks that I just made, no pattern. Both, I think, with 2.5 millimeter needles. I don't know what happened, but this pair fits better than this. But now they're all kind of loose. So maybe I should make socks with like 2.25 millimeter for van for vanilla socks, like sto stockinette socks. And for color work, I'm gonna stick with the two millimeters because there's more stitches and whatever. These are just supposed to be like everyday vanilla socks with colors that I more or less like or scrap yarn or whatever. So this pair is a scrap pair of socks that's supposed to be with a afterthought heel. So the main body is Colorista I'm Unicorn, and the cuff and the heel is Feisty Fiber Glamping. And this one is all in Feisty Fiber Knit City 2022 pink. So yeah, that's the two pair of vanilla socks that I made. Moving on to other kinds of accessories. First, we have a hat. It's the September hat by Petite Knit. And this is also made with yarn that I spun myself. This is a Polworth, 100% Polworth, dyed by House of Wool. And it I made it into this beautiful gradient of like a brown to a purple. I still have a lot of the purple yarn, but not enough for anything. So I don't know what to make with them. Maybe like a contrast color in a sweater in the future, probably. But I still have some of the purple left. So this is a brioche hat. This is what it looks like. I have a bun, so it looks weird with it on, but this is a fit. And I do like the gradient. I just think it's a little small in terms of like, I don't know, the length or just the size. It rides up when I'm wearing it outside, and that's a no-no for hats for me because the only reason I'm wearing a hat is that my ears don't get cold because when my ears get cold, I get a migraine. <laughs> and with the Canadian weather and the wind that comes with the weather, if I don't wear a hat outside, that's like instant headache. <laughs> so for a hat to like ride up and like uncover my ear, it's a very big no-no. I don't know what's wrong with it. I really think that it's just too tight, but... The two sizes are only different in length, not in width. So maybe I need to make the longer one so it has more space to like sit on my head or something. Who knows? But that's that. And the spinning experience is great because it's the first time that I'm spinning with my new e-spinner. The camsole, the home camsole, this was spun entirely on drop spindle. And it cost me a great deal of arm pain, which was why I decided to get the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2, and it helped a lot. It's also the first yarn that I ever spun that is technically correct for knitting. There's like no wrong way to spin yarn, but I mean there is, but anyway. <laughs> technically for knitting, the, the twist direction, I've always spun it wrong. So after knitting the home camisole, I spun it like the other way around and it works a lot better in knitting. It didn't untwist, it didn't do anything. And it's my first time spinning three ply yarn. Everything that I've spun to date are two ply except that one. Even my newest spin is a two ply because it's just easier. But it was pretty fun making a three ply yarn and the yarn is smooth and it's round. It's just fun to look at. So yeah, who knows? Maybe more three-point yarn in my life in the future. The next thing, it's finished pretty early in the year, but it's this little pouch. I think this is called the Honeycomb Pouch from Petite Knit. And yeah, this is what it looks like. The yarn that I used is two yarn. As you can see, it's very fluffy. It's a sock yarn and a mohair. So the sock yarn is from Myrtle Yarn from a long time ago when they still use superwash yarn. I think they've shifted towards more organic and non-superwash and eco yarn. 
so this is when they still use superwash yarn and this color i think it's either called like funfetti or celebration or something like that but it's a pastel-ish pink base with like sprinkle color and the mohair is okay i have two options of mohair it's either one or the other or both together but either way the mohair could be typical bliss taro milk tea or knitting for olive soft rose but yeah it's either one of them or both together because i either run out of ran out of it halfway through or something i do not remember but this is the pouch that i gave it has a stock in the bottom and a honeycomb body in the inside i have lined it with some fabric that i found at home it was actually a dress before it has a unfinished object on the inside i'm using it as a project bag and the string that i use is actually some extra hand spun from a skein because we all know i'm gonna i'm not gonna make like 50 centimeters of i cord basically a, a meter of i cord i'm not gonna do that <laughs> so i just use some hand spun yarn i'm gonna talk about a bit of spinning i realized that i finished some spin earlier this year and then i spent the whole summer spinning the yarn for the camisole this is one of the skeins that i finished in the beginning of the year this fiber is from skein appeal and it is called monster smash monster monster mash i think i said it wrong a few times anyway i i absolutely love how it turned how it turned out it's just a mix of halloween color but not like dark and gloomy has a lot of like white in it to balance it out i think i think she dyed it herself i think i'm not sure because i didn't see any dyer mentioned but it is very beautiful the next yarn is this it's from curious fox fiber and i got the fiber from Wootsie crochet and co which unfortunately they're closing <laughs> But Zoe is keeping their hand dyed yarn business, which is awesome, because they moved, I think, and they decided to close the sewer. But again, best of luck for for them. But this is a mix of like holiday color, I would say, and I do love how it turned out. There is like hint of sparkle somewhere in here. There's like very little, but every time that I'm like spinning and I see a bit of sparkle, it just like, I'm like happy because it has tiny sparkles. This is a two ply yarn and it's actually the first time that I'm spinning woolen yarn and it's a worsted weight yarn because it's the first time that I'm spinning woolen. So I didn't really know how to like control the yarn consistency. So it's like an overall worsted yarn. The other one is a DK weight yarn. Excuse Hades' butt. Then there's this guy, which I talk about in my previous podcast, if you've seen it. So this is from Stash Lounge, and the colorway is Fifty Shades of Beige. I'm going to make a hay sweater with this yarn. I have completed the spin since the last knitting podcast. All the fibers gone. They have all been turned into yarn. This is also spun woolen, and I spin it from the fold. So supposedly, I should get more yardage than what I have question mark is that how it works anyway if it's not how it works then I just sound stupid but anyway it was a nice experience spinning a sweater quantity and I hope that the entire sweater quantity is consistent even though I think I've been spinning thinner and thinner so I don't know this is gonna be a big project next year I actually have a lot of gift knits but I don't remember them by heart and I've mentioned them in the podcast. So since I don't have them, I'm not going to mention them now. But they're like sprinkled in the podcast somewhere. It is that section of the video where we move on to the sweaters, which are always the best category, personally speaking. So let's get into it. First sweater is my Oslo sweater by Petite Knit. This is still one of my favorite sweater, except the fact that the sleeve is long as hell. And in my vlog, I tried to fix it by adding elastic to the sleeves, and I haven't worn it out yet. 
So we'll see how it works with me wearing this out. But it just haven't been cold enough recently for me to wear like a alpaca fluffy sweater. Even now putting it on, I'm sweating. <laughs> but this is a drop shoulder sweater and it is a very nice fit. It has a thick collar, which my mom is kind of obsessed with and I'm thinking about making her a sweater, but she already requested like another sweater. So I'm going to make her that sweater instead of this sweater. All that to say that maybe I'll make her this sweater for Christmas. <laughs> but yeah, I still like this sweater a lot and I want to wear this out. I just haven't been wearing this because like I said, it's too warm. And also I didn't fix the sleeves before, so I didn't want to wear it because before I fixed the sleeve, it was like this big. It was like this much bigger. And if I want to do things and put my sleeves up, I can't. And now I can because it has elastics. So we'll see how it works with the elastics, but still one of my favorite sweater. The yarn that I use is Explore Knits, Extra, I can't say it anymore, Extra Sprinkles. There we go. And huh, what's it called? Fiber Spades Cumulus in the colorway Natural 928. There's not a lot of store that sells fiber spades, but it's actually one of my favorite alpaca yarn because it has a lot of alpaca in it. I think it's just alpaca and silk, which makes it really, really soft. But also, if you wash it with a superwash merino, it's just gonna grow. That was the mistake that I made. I should have wet blocked this, but I got lazy and I want to wear it immediately, so I steam blocked it. So the next time when I washed it, the sleeve just kind of grew. And it grew. <laughs> and then I kind of give up on wearing it. The good thing is that I put a thick elastic band in the collar so the collar didn't grow. If the collar grew, I would probably be even more like less willing to wear this sweater even though I love it. That's the first sweater and I can't wait to wear this more. The next sweater is also by Petite Knit. This is the anchor sweater and I'm actually not really happy with this sweater. I love the color because the yarn is amazing. It's Spring Fever from The Wandering Flock, which is definitely one of my favorite company, but I'm just too poor for it. <laughs> but eventually, when I have the financial capability, I'm buying the fuck out of Wandering Flock. I'm not really happy with this sweater. The length is one of the sweaters that I have full length of, which I'm really happy about. And the body is good. The problem I have with is the sleeves. The sleeves are too tight for me. They're form-fitting, which I don't like in my clothing. And especially in a thick sweater, I don't want it to be form-fitting. It's really hot right now and I'm sweating. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm thinking about doing surgery on the sweater again. Like either cutting open the bottom here, like after the ribbing section, cutting it open an increase on the arm and not the body and then re-knit the arm yeah i'm thinking about that i have about like half a skein or so left of this yarn so i think i'm gonna have enough as buffer but i don't know i'm just not motivated to do it so i'm probably gonna suffer with the tight sleeves <laughs> but overall very easy pattern. This is very beginner friendly. It does not have German short row. I have watched Abigail make, make stuff. Abigail added German short rows to her anchor tee, I believe, and it looks really good. And she did explain in her video or like an extra thing how she did it. So if I make this again, I'm going to check that out and add German short row because sometimes when I'm wearing the sweater, it keeps like trying to cut into my neck. <laughs> So definitely add German short row if you're capable, but otherwise it's a beginner friendly round yoke pattern. Next sweater, I need to wash this, but we're going to live with it for now because this section is not blocked just yet because I just fixed it. But this is my alley sweater and the yarn is from Camp Fiber Yarns. It is the 2022... December colorways and 
the main color, the beige color with the sprinkle is Holiday Eggnog, which I just got eggnog. I've almost never had eggnog in my life because it's not something that I grew up with and my family don't know what it is. So I just bought my first carton of eggnog and I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> I know it's kind of dumb to be excited about it, but I'm still excited about it. Um, and the purple color is Sugar Plum Glow. And I think these two match super well together. I got inspired by Laura herself, the yarn dyer. She was knitting a alley sweater in this exact colorway. I don't know if she got to fix her sweater yet, but she was like having some problem with the sizing. All the credits to her because the yarn is from her, the color is from her, and like the inspiration is from her, and also like the pattern maker. God, I'm really bad with names. She did an amazing job with writing this pattern. It's so detailed and it has all the tips and tricks that you need to make this sweater. So I think if you want to start making like color work raglan, this is a great pattern to start with. Alley sweater. And yeah, it's great. It was originally too short. I've talked about this a few times. So when I finished it, the sleeves were too long. The body was too short. So I took some time to fix the sleeves. And then I got tired of the body being too cropped, so I added a little section. So now the body is fitting a lot better. I just need to block it, wash it. So I'll get to that when I get to that, but currently it just has like a band in the middle, which is fine. Nobody's seeing that except like the few hundred people watching the video, but <laughs> thank you for watching by the way. All right, next sweater. This is my Moonset Pullover by Ozetta. The yarn is from Fireweed Fiberco, and it does have like fluffy alpaca with it. And it's from Kama Rose in a medium blue color, which I never remember and never looked up. It was a mistake that I got this medium blue. I don't know what happened. I put the mint-ish color in my cart but then I received this medium blue color and then when I went back to my order slip and my order history, it is the medium blue color. So I don't know what happened. Something took over me and I put the medium blue in it, but it still works well. The sweater looks nice. And the same problem with all of my sweater, the body is way too short, but I'll eventually got to, I'll eventually get to fix it because currently I do not feel like cutting anything open. So this is what we're working with. I like this pattern. It's a drop shoulder design with the collar built in while you're knitting. And it features like a big sleeve with I-cord. The bottom also have I-cord. And it's just a nice relaxing fit. And I think it looks really nice. Imagine it's like a, like a skirt. It will look really cute. Oh, the colorway for the for the base yarn is Snow Globe from Fireweed Fiber Co, but that might be an old name because they've got to changing a few names to make it less holiday y, I think. So this might not be called Snow Globe anymore. I'm just gonna add like extra stuff if it's not called that anymore. We are at our final finished object of 2023. I said I would film a video of this, of like the fit and the try-on, but I never got to it. So here it is. This is my Road Tripper Tea by Ozetta. And the yarn that I use is Cat Fiber Yarn Winter Sunset. Winter Sunrise. Winter Sunrise. <laughs> it is a variegation yarn of light to deep-ish purple with speckles of black and a bit of yellow. So this is what it looks like. I did a dum-dum. The buttons, I'm gonna walk closer so you can see my mistake. The buttons are messed up and instead of having the button band that's supposed to have the buttons coming from the bottom, so this band is supposed to have the button, right? but it's coming from the top. Like I crossed them wrong when I knitted together, when I joined the body or like the front together. So now it's just like fake button is like sewn together. And I should have put these two button on this side. So it looks more correct, 
but now it's just heavy and it kind of just flap open when I'm doing things. So maybe I'll correct it in the future, but I just don't feel like right. I don't feel like it right now. <laughs> but this is what it looks like. What size did I make? Medium? There's a lot of information missing from like all of my stuff, but I, I just want to talk about it. So I'm sorry if it's getting like a little unhinged towards the end. It's just very messy and it's like a reflection of me. <laughs> this is the last finished object of 2023 and i don't know what i want to make for 2024 definitely more spinning because i'm having a lot of fun with it and maybe i need to finish that crochet blanket that i started in 2022 i probably should there's a lot of ufos unfinished object sitting in my stash and there's a lot of stuff that i need to frog overall a very messy knitting life and if you're the same you're not alone <laughs> And if you're a very organized knitter, props to you because I'm not one. <laughs> I, I cast on a lot and I finish sporadically. I haven't been buying a lot of yarn, which is good for me, but I don't really set like no buys because I, whenever I set a limit to myself, I just like come back with way more. So that's just really bad on my like anything habit. So I don't set no buys for myself, but I've been really good with getting yarn and I'm proud of myself for that. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else do people say at the end of these kind of videos? Happy New Year if you're watching this in 2024. Hello from the past. Thank you so much for watching a video this long. I appreciate your support if you've been here since the beginning, from the middle, since one podcast ago. Doesn't matter. Or this is your first video. I'm sorry about the mess. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and hopefully I'll give you a lot more enjoyable content in 2024. Let me know in the comments what you would like to make in 2024. If you would like to explore a new technique, learn a new craft, explore new fiber content or new yarn dyer or new brands. I really want to try out like big commercial brands like Santa's Garn, Knitting for Olive, that kind of stuff. I hope 2023 haven't treated you terribly. It has been a hard year and it definitely has been a hard year for a lot of people, but I hope that 2024 is better. We'll do it together. Yeah, we'll do it together. <laughs> I'll, I'll still be here. I'll be making videos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.